Last week, we made some pasta and discussed the very problematic Ferrari F60. It's a bad joke. But today, we're going back in time to 2022. The Mercedes W13. Now, if you only listened to Total Wolf and didn't watch any of the races last year, then you would think that Mercedes was DNFing every other weekend and barely scoring points. But no, just like the F60 in 2009, the W13 also won a race when George Rus George Rus when George Russell took the top step of the podium in Brazil. Speaking of podiums, the W13 got 17 of them. That's a lot. The W13 gave Mercedes third in the Constructors Championship, coming only 39 points behind Ferrari for second, while being very clear of Alpine in fourth. With the caveat, though, that Ferrari is Ferrari, and the Mercedes, at least reliability-wise, was pretty much flawless, which Ferrari obviously was not. Nonetheless, last year in 2022, the W13 was clearly the third best car, and oftentimes the second best, sometimes even the best. Debatable. But just the fact that Merck isn't winning and winning often, we still have Mercedes issuing apology letters to fans for their performance. Kind of embarrassing, a little bit cringe, but nonetheless, less evident of the team's problems as a whole and also of their winning mentality, take that as you will. You know that Ferrari dominance that I was blabbering on about in the F60 video? Well, that was nothing compared to the Mercedes dominance from 2014 all the way nearly to the end of the turbo hybrid era. Eight back-to-back -back constructor championships and nearly eight back-to-back -back drivers championships. That's 15 championship trophies since 2014. They almost sweeped it. They basically had no competition the whole time apart from Ferrari for one or two years, but not really, and Red Bull for one year, really. But their domination could only last so long, all good things, depending on who you ask, need to come to an end. So in 2022, as I'm sure you already know, the grid was completely shaken up when new regulations completely changing how the cars look and operate came into effect. The cars went back to ground effect and they look so much better. That's not an opinion, that's a fact. Anyways, to understand what went wrong, we first need to understand what went right with Mercedes in 2014. Mercedes had some of the most dominant cars the F1 grid has ever seen, most notably the W05 from 2014, the W06 from 2015, the W07 from 2016, and of course the almighty all-conquering, but statistically less dominant than the ones I just listed, the W11 from 2020. But every car from the start of the turbo hybrid era in 2014 to the ground effect era in 2022 was, for the most part, in a league of its own. Except for 2021, where a competitor finally managed to close the gap and give Mercedes some real competition. But we don't need to talk about that. <sighs> I actually have a Mercedes hat coming in the mail. Don't get mad at me. Ferrari got close in 2017 and 2018, but again, eh, not really. The seeds were sown way back in 2011, when Mercedes was ahead every step of the way from early development of the turbo hybrid power plants to having a chassis that was already better than the rest of the field, except maybe Red Bull, but the 2014 Red Bull was too busy exploding to be able to take advantage of the strong aero package that they brought. They managed to come out so strong in 2014 by having what was far and beyond the best engine. No competition, nobody came even close. The Merc power unit was OP. As I mentioned, they also had an incredible chassis to pair with that power unit, but the engine was so good that it's what took all the headlines, leading other teams to think that that was the only reason for Mercedes dominance, so that's what they were chasing after. Nobody focused on the chassis, they were all just focused on Mercedes power unit, when in fact it was the complete package. They had the right leadership, the right people, and more importantly, the right funding to nail the new regulations going into 2014. And the rest of the teams were stuck trying to just play catch up, but in a pre-budget cap era where Mercedes were already doing all of the winning, they were already getting all the prize money and all of the big sponsor money, they were able to outdevelop all the other teams when they already had a huge advantage to be begin with just because they had infinite money to dump at any problems that they encountered. They were already ahead and they could also just outdevelop anybody who was trying to catch up or getting close. So in summary, they came out of the gates swinging in 2014, they ticked every single box and unstable competition just couldn't keep up through what was a relatively stable regulation period in Formula 1. Come 2022, another huge regulation change comes to the sport bringing the cars back to the 70s and the 80s when ground effect was king, and as with any regulation change in Formula 1, the goal was obviously to lead to better racing and to close up the field. Going into the new regulations, Mercedes Mercedes, just like Ferrari in 2009, like we were talking about last week, they just missed the mark. Took an L. We're Mercedes. Now we can keep it simple. The biggest reason why the W13 wasn't as competitive as the Red Bull or the Ferrari was in 2022 was because the team just couldn't run the car low enough to produce the downforce via ground effect that it needed to be as quick as the competitors. Because of a little thing called porpoising. And I'm sure you're sick of hearing about it by now. If they ran the car low enough so that it performed how they wanted it to and how they expected it to, that's the important one, how they expected it to, the car would porpoise so bad that it would give Lewis and George CTE by the end of the first race weekend. So so to stop the porpoising, they had to raise the ride height, which meant less downforce, which meant slower lap times, which meant fewer points, less speed, less winning, less good. Now, of course, Mercedes weren't the only ones who had porpoising problems. Most of the grid had problems with porpoising, except for Red Bull. Ferrari notably had bad porpoising problems as well, but remained competitive anyways. The big issue for the W13 was that it would porpoise while entering into high-speed corners, which is really dangerous. Porpoising into high-speed corners is part of the reason why ground effect was originally banned in the 80s, because it was just
just so dangerous having cars lose control by porpoising into these high speed corners. It was so easy for them to lose control and end up sliding into the barriers at high speed. Very dangerous, not good, very bad, banned until 2022. It would also damage the floor of the car by bottoming out so hard so frequently. And the floor is very important with the new regulations, even more important than in years prior because all of those Venturi tunnels and things used to generate that ground effect that the cars need today are all down there, getting smashed to bits. Not good. But it's not just porpoising, the W13 had other problems too. It was draggy, partly because they had to raise the ride height so much to help with the porpoising. Power unit also wasn't up to snuff with the Ferrari and the Red Bull. That advantage that they had baked in ever since 2014 with their hybrid power unit on with the 2022 regulations when they switched to the E10 fuels. The W13 also had significant brake separation, which is kind of hard to explain, but it's when you push the brake pedal instead of both front wheels doing the same amount of work, either the right or the left would do more braking than the other one because of temperature differences. Lewis Hamilton was quoted as saying that this was particularly bad at Coda and that it had been bothering the team all year and they haven't been able to find a solution. The W13 also had big problems getting the tires into the operating window and keeping them there throughout the race. They couldn't get the tires to work the way that they wanted to and it's a problem that the team continues to face even with the 2023 car which we'll talk more about in a moment. Now obviously it's hard to know exactly what went wrong with the Mercedes unless you're one of the engineers working on the problems and also God help you if you're a Mercedes engineer right now. The W13 was plagued, inconsistent finishes and a myriad of problems that kept the car from working the way the team wanted or more importantly expected it to. And in a new, hold on a second, and in a new budget cap era the team just couldn't dump money on problems like they could before. It also doesn't help that Mercedes as an organization has lost some of their best talent that led them down that road to success in the first place almost 10 years ago. Most notably people like James Vowles, engineer and chief strategist, leaving Mercedes to be team principal at Williams from 2023 onwards. Aldo Costa, one of the key players behind Ferrari's dominance in the early 2000s with Michael Schumacher, said to be a pillar in the team by Total Wolf and one of the leading figures behind Mercedes' success left in 2019. And Andy Cowell, one of the key figures behind the success of the Mercedes power unit being as bulletproof and as strong as it was, he left the team. Just two years earlier, we had one of the most dominant cars in F1 history with the W11. It had no competition, it was untouchable. Two years later, in a quick rewriting of the rule book, and poof, they find themselves chasing ghosts and problems the likes of which seem to have unknown causes. It's crazy, you say all this and it sounds like you're talking about Williams in 2019 when really we're talking about a team and a car that almost came second in the Constructors' Championship last year. But between 2022 and 2023, Mercedes had made a significant leap in terms of development, at least so they thought. The car does look much more stable and is faster, but is generally where it was last year, and it's just that everyone else also got better too, along with the Mercedes. As of recording this, we're two races into the 2023 season, and Mercedes has all but come out and said that they're entirely abandoning their radical design for the W13 and the W14. Come next year, we should have an entirely different looking Mercedes, which will cement the W13 and its wild side pod design as the car that could have been.